Alas, there comes the time when man will no longer give birth to any star. Lo, I show you the last man. In Nietzsche's epic work Thus Spoke Zarathustra, we find the concept of the last man. Zarathustra has descended from the high mountains. He is longing to speak his wisdom to the common man below. However, his message, the coming of the Superman or of the Übermensch, falls on deaf ears. The crowd laughs at him and mocks him. There is ice in their laughter. Evidently, the crowd is not yet ready to hear of the Übermensch. Zarathustra's message of advancement, of a lofty goal for mankind, of the next stage of humankind, the meaning of the earth, it all falls flat. The crowd, the common man, is not interested. They cannot be roused to excitement. So Zarathustra tries something else. Instead of talking about lofty aspirations and high ideals, he tries to go in the opposite direction. He speaks to the crowd in terms of what awaits them if they don't heed his message. If the people won't be motivated by visions of heaven, maybe they will be motivated by visions of hell. That hell is the last man. Introduced as the opposite of the Übermensch or Superman, the last man is Nietzsche's vision for mankind should it not heed his call for greatness. The last man is contemptible, empty, unthinking, unfeeling even. The last man is Nietzsche's nightmare vision for humanity. Zarathustra hopes that this pessimistic vision of mankind will scare the crowd into listening to him. His strategy is that of the biblical prophet, who preaches the end of the world in order to increase the urgency of his message, as if to say, this is your final chance to listen to me, or else. And so Zarathustra paints the dreadful picture of that lamentable creature, the last man. What is love? What is creation? What is longing? What is a star? So asks the last man, and blinks. The last man is devoid of grand thoughts. He is not concerned with high ideals. He is not in awe of the world or of life. To him, things simply exist. He asks no questions. He does not wonder about anything. Everything seems to him to be just because, for no reason. And if there is a reason, he does not care to find it. The last man asks big, profound questions like what is love, what is creation, what is a star, and then he just blinks. There is nothing there but an empty expression. His questions do not actually mean anything. There is no genuine wonder behind what he is asking, no desire to know, no life. There is no grandeur. The last man is small, his world is small, he makes everything small. The earth has then become small, and on it there hops the last man who makes everything small. His species is ineradicable, like that of the ground flea. The last man lives longest. The last man avoids struggle, he is a creature of comfort, he finds the easy way out. They have left the regions where it is hard to live, for they need warmth. The last man is completely devoid of motivation. Everything is just too much effort. The last man does not put effort into anything. He is a creature of lethargy and laziness. One no longer becomes poor or rich. Both are too burdensome. Who still wants to rule? Who still wants to obey? Both are too burdensome. In the world of the last man, Humans are reduced to completely willless being, more like plants than human beings. There is no striving, no ambition, no nothing. Everything becomes small and petty. They have their little pleasures for the day and their little pleasures for the night. But above all, they are all equal. There is no greatness in man. Everyone is the same. No room for the genius, the artist, the philosopher, the conqueror. No room for excellency. No room for trying to rise above. No shepherd and one herd. Everyone wants the same, everyone is equal. He who has other sentiments goes voluntarily into the madhouse. This is the grim picture Zarathustra paints of humanity's future. His hope is that this dreadful vision of the future will serve as motivation to the crowd. Maybe they will listen now. But no, the crowd keeps on mocking the prophet. With bitter cynicism they say, Give us this last man, O Zarathustra. They called out, make us into these last men, then we will give you a present of the superman. And all the people exulted and smacked their lips. Zarathustra, however, turned sad, and said in his heart, they understand me not, I am not the mouth for these ears. From this point onward, Zarathustra tells himself he will no longer try to speak to the crowd and try to convince them. He will seek out those rare individuals who are fit for his message, the diamonds in the rough, who have ears to hear what he has to say. The crowd is obviously not ready for him, and it was a mistake to think they were.
From now on, Zarathustra will not address the great multitude of men, but only those few who are ready, the free spirits of the future. If we leave the allegorical world of Das spoke Zarathustra and come back to our real world, what do we suppose Nietzsche is trying to say here? Is the last man a vision of the future of human society at large? Is Nietzsche saying that, unless some kind of revolution happens, we are drifting off into the ambitionless world of the last man? Is that why, in the story, the crowd ultimately rejects Zarathustra's message? Or is the message that a select few, presumably readers of Nietzsche, will take it upon themselves to prevent this vision of the future from manifesting itself? Will a few free spirits take it upon themselves to start a revolution? Or should we go a layer deeper? Maybe the vision of the last man is not a vision for society, but an allegory of the individual. Is Nietzsche asking us to rise above this wretched existence of the last man, to aspire to something greater? Is Nietzsche telling us to get it together, otherwise nothing but the misery of the last man awaits us? Please tell us in the comments what you think, we'd love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, there is more Nietzsche coming, so please subscribe to the channel. We have also done a big series on two of Nietzsche's most important works, Beyond Good and Evil and The Genealogy of Morals. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.